Charles, uh, uh, not not too long before the show, I saw you walking rather briskly up the hill backstage, up to the parking area. I mean, you were, it was uh, quite a clip you uh, you had going. You're, you're an avid walker, aren't you, Charles? Yeah, I've been walking for years. <laughs> it's, just, it's just one of those things I do, you know. <laughs> well, we are all proud for you, Charles. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know you mean that sincerely. I appreciate it. I'll give you one more peace sign. Thank you. Thank you. Because you know I'm all about peace, Lyle. I'm a lifelong flower child. It's true. I live in a rich I live in Alabama. But we get along out there. Usually. And, uh, you, you and I, you mean? Yeah, well, everybody. Yeah. And, and I am a flower, I'm a bona fide, certified flower child. Do you want to know why? Uh, please tell us, Ruth. I'd better not talk about it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm, I, I have an Alabama state wildflower. You know, I was the first person in the state of Alabama to discover and identify a certain wildflower. And that's called a state record again. As naturalists, we would call it Palencia verna, but for you laymen, it's known as Blue-Eyed Mary. That's true. Thank you. Charles, you amaze me if each and every night. Each and... Blue-Eyed Mary. Blue-Eyed Mary. Palencia verna. Palencia. Palencia verna. Name, named in honor of some, someone named Collins. Uh, Valencia Verna. They just make those names up, you know. <laughs> that, that sounds like uh, an instrumental we need to run. Valencia Verna. It could be. Yeah. It could be. On, on trumpet and flugelhorn, a gentleman I'm, I'm pretty certain has never uh, identified a wildflower. But <laughs> in Ohio, we just call it pot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Herman. Yeah. On, on tenor, oh my goodness, we have fun. On, on tenor from Atlanta, Georgia, originally from Waco, Texas, Mace Hibbert. Mace did, didn't didn't it warn, Mace is a, a father of uh, young young children and and uh, well not so young anymore. Uh, no, my son is fifteen and my daughter is twelve, going on twenty six. Exactly, exactly. But that, didn't, doesn't it warm your heart to see it when those children were? I'm glad they came back because I thought as soon as I spoke about them they just left. And, and the, but to see him running around doesn't that make you happy? It really does. I want to go run around. Mace, Mace has a. We all, you know, we all do uh, things to keep uh, keep our families from forgetting us when we're on the road, and and uh, uh, you know, phone calls and FaceTime and all that. But Mace has observes a tradition that I admire greatly. He wears socks every night, a different pair of socks every night that his daughter Clara picks out for him ahead of the tour. And would you you mind sharing your socks with us tonight? <laughs> Wait, but it was a, you were a little bit out of the light. Find, find some good light because those are impressive. I can, I can see what they are from here, but I'm not sure the folks out there can. can you, would you describe them for us? Well, they have magnets on them and they have baby chickens on them because they're chick magnet socks. <laughs> On guitar from Los Angeles, James Harrow. <laughs> Playing guitar and mandolin from North Manchester, Indiana, Jeff White. Yeah. 
Jeff, now I always, I always say North Manchester, but the other night when we were in uh, Nashville, Indiana, you referred to it as Manchester. Was that just sort of an in inside Indiana kind of thing? Pretty much. <laughs> Is there such a, a do, do I have it right when I say North Manchester? That's correct. Oh. And why, what exactly is the difference between the two? Well, uh, there isn't a difference. We just try to differentiate from North Webster. So we call it Manchester sometimes. The college is called Manchester University now. Uh -huh. Not North Manchester. Well, I feel enlightened. <laughs> I'm delighted. conversation up later after the show. <laughs> On fiddle from Austin, Texas, so Warren Hood. Yeah. I've known Warren since he was seven. He, his dad, Champ Hood, from Uncle Walt's band, was a dear friend of mine, played with us in a large band. And, and uh, Warren has two young boys, uh, seven and five, right? War, Warren is a real dad because he is an expert fisherman and he's taught both his boys to fish. And, and uh, we, I, I go fishing with my two, but it's not, there's nothing expert about it. But <laughs> Warren, Warren has a, this is how serious Warren is. He brings along on the road a collapsible uh, uh, fishing pole, and, and it's a little, little rod and reel. Yeah. I, uh, you can take it anywhere, like you know, to the golf course, fish the hole there, you know, just sneak <laughs> it in anywhere. Golf is a versatile game, it really yeah. is. <laughs> well, there's something for everybody. Yeah. But, but Warren has been fishing every day, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but. Did, did you fish today and did you catch anything? I caught a bass today. <laughs> I took a picture and I let it go. That's you. Now, you're, you're, when your boys fish, I mean, do you, do you always release them or do you ever uh, keep them? We always release them. They don't know what happens between the point when you catch it and it's on your plate. They don't know right. that part. It's a lot, isn't it? It's, it's a we, lot. We'll cross that bridge later. I, when, when my daughter was four years old, we were fishing the little pond in front of the house, and I thought she, and she caught like three casts yeah. in, she caught her first fish, and it was a little perch. And I thought she might be traumatized by the whole exercise of it. I took the hook out, tossed it back, and watched. You could see it sort of swim away, just kind of disappear into the darkness of the pond, and she sighed and said, I sure wanted to eat him. <laughs> On steel guitar, from Sandy Creek, New York, Buck Reed. Jim Cox. Yeah. Singing with us from Los Angeles, Willie Green Jr. Yeah. I, I was a fan of Willie Green's when I first saw him on stage on the 31st of January 1981. Willie was singing with uh, Rye Cooter and John Hyde on a tour. Yeah. And we, we started working together in 1992. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Willie, you, you just amaze me. Your, your low notes, I can feel them all the way over here. They kind of shake, shake the stage. How, how low can you go, Willie? Well, I'm next to the wood on the piano. The low A. <laughs> What he did. <laughs> you also go the other direction too, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Singing with us from Oakland, Lamont Van Hook. <laughs> from Washington, D.C., Amy Keys. Yeah. 
It was, it was Lamont Van Hook and uh, Arnold McCullough, who's uh, sung with us uh, in the band for years and on recording, who recommended Amy. We, a, a, Amy, we are honored to, to be with you on stage. We've been working together almost a whole week now. Almost a week. We're almost reducing just this side of a week. It's very cool. I feel like I've been here forever. Well, we are so <laughs> glad you're here with us. You, you have family here tonight? Yes, I do. Would you like to, to give them a shout out? Ah, my baby brother. B, well, I call him BT, but my mother and father named him William Timothy. Thank you for being here, BT. Thank you. On bass from Los Angeles, the one and only Leland Sklar. <laughs> Leland, your beard is, is uh, puffed up tonight. It's the humidity. It's always beautiful, but it has just a little something extra. I'll try to do something special when we come here. Le Leland is, uh, well, his career is legendary. Le Leland is gracious, and he has, a, he has an immensely popular YouTube site. If you haven't been to it, check, check out Leland's thought. But Leland does videos of our venues every.